Hello and welcome to Perspectives. I'm having great fun today. I've got guests who have never been in front, well, not often been in front of the camera. They've pretty much been behind the camera and I've never seen more conscious people. People who make others miserable have spent 83.98 minutes getting their camera angles right. I'm just kidding. Not being serious. Uh, filmmaking is, uh, is a new career. It's, it's, been, it's been there for a long time, but now it's actually being accepted as a proper career. A lot of people criticize media, free media, new media, uh, that it hasn't really done much. Maybe free, independent, new electronic media hasn't done much in changing the country, for the better or the worse, but it has opened new opportunities. Careers which in the past were seen as, as, uh, as something which you did when you have, if, if you couldn't become a doctor and engineer, you became maybe joint television for, for small amounts of money. Filmmaking or production or documentary making was something only the industrialized countries did. Countries like ourselves got these little jobs from the industrialized country. Maybe BBC would want a short thing done and we'd do the short thing for them. There was no real demand for such work within Pakistan. Also, even though I can remember in the 80s or the, or the 70s, a lot of creative work, but generally speaking, the creativity was not it was not budding in the past 20, 25 years. But today, filmmaking is becoming a very fashionable and a sexy career. The other day, I was doing a little, recording a little short piece for one of the hospitals I really love and endorse in this hospital, and they wanted a small endorsement. So I said, fine, and I said, you can record it in my studio here at PTV. And they sent some young kids who, if I saw otherwise, would think, ah, yeah, Pakistani youth, typical, useless, they do not. Again, I'm kidding, please don't take me seriously. But when I got to interact with them for 15 minutes, I realized they were smart, intelligent, focused, professional, creative, well-spoken, and had a purpose and a direction in life. They had opted for a career which is not a typical career, filmmaking, documentary making. I will uh, introduce my guests. Uh, who have made me realize that there's a, there's a renewed faith in Pakistan's youth. And uh, one gentleman who I did not meet in this team is joining us in Lahore. Let me introduce him first. Young filmmaker, photographer, Mr. Agha Bas is with us in Lahore. Agha, thank you very much for joining us. In Karachi, on my right, I have from that team, Mr. Danish Hassan. Danish, thank you very much. Ms. Tayyiba Mastoi. Tayyiba Saba, thank you very much. Take time out. Mr. Mustafa Mohsen and Mr. Ali Hakim. I was asking who's the gang leader, and Mustafa has this obvious pre-declared position that he's the gang leader, and I asked if he's a democratically elected gang leader, and he said, well, I'm the producer. Uh, we're this project. So I said, well, you're a democratically selected gang leader. It sounds like Pakistan's democracy. Uh, so tell us, Mustafa, I'd like to start with you. What are you guys doing? What is your team? What sort of work are you doing, just generally shortly? Well, currently we uh, have a team of four very talented uh, young individuals um, and we're working on a documentary for in this hospital and uh, it's, it's a documentary that has provided us all sorts of challenges mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the planning process, in terms of the production and then right now we're working on the editing process and I think uh, what, what really working for us is that the team is so cohesive and that's why we're able to actually uh, meet our deadlines. And you went to school for this? Yes, uh, Tayeba and myself, Ali, we went to Stant, which is mm -hmm. uh, a recently opened film school, mm -hmm. first of its kind in Pakistan, yeah. like a, a pioneer dedicated film school. Uh, and that's where we actually met each other and we've had the privilege, I've had the privilege and the honor of working with these people mm -hmm. and, uh, and really wanted them to work with me on, on the industry. Uh, Fantastic. Uh, Basab, Lahore is really the center for creativity and art. Um, what's your experience? Why have you opted for this career of filmmaking? What are the opportunities for you in Pakistan? Can Abbas hear me or not? I think we're having slight technical difficulty. We'll fix that, that sound just now. All right, Teba, tell me. What's your experience? Why have you opted for this career? 
Well, to begin with, it's something that I really, really want to do. And mm-hmm. something that I saw not many people are interested in. But then again, the industry is booming up. Mm-hmm. So I was like, why not? Why not go for it? And personally, being a girl, it was a challenge too, to come into this industry. Okay. But, yeah. Why is it a challenge being a girl? Uh, because of these people? Because of family? No. I, uh, very frankly speaking, one reason is, yes, there is a lot of discrimination because I went for cinematography. Okay. And when people thought, ke, oh, why not go for directing or screenwriting, you know, cinematography to work out and carry heavy equipment around. And I was like, you don't get to discriminate because I'm a female. Mm-hmm. The other reasons were because it's something that I know that I have a passion for. Something I'm good at it too personally and I'm learning still. Now that you're in the field, is it a tough job? It is. It is tough? It is. For a woman or is it tough for anyone? No, it's tough for anyone. So it's not a gender difficulty? No, it's not a gender difficulty. Okay. Um, Danish, tell me, why, why in this career? Uh, well, I'd like to start off by saying that it's not something I really wanted to do from the start. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just something I stumbled into. Again, uh, people around me were interested in something like this. And before I was into filmmaking, I usually, I had uh, my you know, my people, um, I meant like my family as in like Ali, uh, my cousin who's, being, uh, who's already uh, started doing this a long time before. Mm-hmm. So there was something that he, uh, you know, invited me into. So uh, that was something I didn't exactly know that I was going to start off, out of doing, but uh, it was something that uh, I had the skill set for. And uh, I've been watching films since I was a child and everybody does. But they, I had that feeling in me that I need to tell a story. I need to tell a story that uh, obviously you can tell I'm not <laughs> very good at speaking uh, the story out, but I'd like to tell story visually. <coughs> that's what uh, compelled me into coming into this. So that's why, uh, that's the reason, basic reason why I wanted to. Why would I think you're not good at speaking? You're doing fine. Sorry? Mm-hmm. You're doing just fine. <laughs> why would I think you're not good at speaking? No. Um, uh, you realize that it is not a career that sells very well. I mean, you I don't get great do. rishtas if you're a filmmaker. <laughs> well, that's MBAs get the best rishtas. I know. Uh, it's not something I've come into because of the, you know, the money the aspect of it, but uh, it's just something I like to do. And inshallah, if I'm good at it and uh, the people I'm working with, Inshallah, will do good with uh, by me. So, Inshallah, I do. I'm not worried about the monetary aspect of it. Just something I like to do, and uh, Inshallah, I grow with it along the process. So, Josh Pizza. Well, um, I changed three careers before I got into filmmaking. Fantastic. Yeah. What were the other two? Well, uh, primary, I was a textile uh, technologist because that seemed to be the most apt thing to do at that time. <coughs> textile industry was booming. Didn't work out. Not at all. Uh, Left that. Joined an auditing career. Was fun. Really fun. But essentially, the real passion that I had was always filmmaking. Telling stories. And I guess the process of becoming a filmmaker is actually experiencing life at different levels, however you can. And then try to show that through different means, using different mediums, however. And I believe since... Filmmaking is the ultimate medium. Why not? Okay. Um, Aga Basab, I hope you can hear us now. Um, my question again to you, I repeat, why have you opted this career and Lahore is really the center of art and creativity for Pakistan? Um, what sort of work are you doing and what are your plans? You still can't hear me? Okay, we'll try to solve that problem soon. <coughs> Danish. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, I'm bad at names. Mustafa, tell us. What are your plans? Do you think this is a, this is a career which is uh, recommended for people? Well, what's the market size? Are you, I mean, well, where does this go? It's a good question. I mean, uh, the, the industry right now, uh, if you ask me, is uh, we, we hit rock bottom a couple of years ago. Okay. And the only way after that is not. It's a good opportunity to get in. Having said that, there's still a lot of evolution that has to be done before there's a lot of money for a lot of people. So the pie is small, but it is increasing. Uh, but you have to put in your sweat, you have to put in your time, you have to make those sacrifices before you actually establish yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, give you, you know, for instance, myself, I'm, I'm an MBA, and I'm also I have a full-time job. And, uh, you know, I still have to cull out time to do my filmmaking, which is also my passion. 
So without sacrifice, uh, and we need more people to put in those sacrifices, otherwise the industry is going to stay where it is. When you say you have a day job and it's just something you do on the side, is this not paying you enough right now? No, not at all. Um, but I, I do believe that um, right now is a time when we actually are driven by a passion. And the money will come if our work is good. Um, the market volume is small? They're not paying you. The thing is, uh, primarily the reason why there is the revenue is so small in this, in this field is because there aren't that many outlets for the, the things that we create. Primarily, filmmaking depends on the number of cinemas that you have. And if you look at the statistics, the number of cinemas have actually decreased since the late 70s. Okay, I want to interrupt you there. I don't think going forward, cinemas control content. Well, not in terms of given content. Given the internet. Well, well uh, if you talk in terms of the internet, internet is a different market medium. So if you t uh, talk about democratized media, yes, it exists for us. But in terms of revenue generation, and that meaning, meaning the immediate revenue generation for any filmmaker, the internet is a great start. But you can't depend on it. You may get a couple of good Vimeo. Really? I'm going to leave that, that topic open for a second, uh, if you allow me. Uh, Aga I hope you can hear me now. Um, I'll repeat my question. How I feel Lahore is really where the art and creativity yes, is. How's calling. your yes, ex experience in... I'm sorry we, we, you, you couldn't hear us earlier. My apologies. Uh, what's your experience like in this deal? Why are you in this deal? What sort of again. opportunities do you have? So I've lost him again. TV lies. We've lost... Abbas uh, again, I guess this is really not, I, we'll, we'll be going for a break, break shortly with we'll this at that time. Sorry, you were saying. Yes. Oh yeah, I was The telling. internet, yes. I, in my opinion, is where all video content is going to come out from and even the monetization will happen through the internet and not through your large screen. Yeah, so, true. I agree. I agree 100%. A well, couple of things about the internet. I mean, there are platforms like YouTube, which we don't have access to anymore. And then there's... But well, you don't have access to right now. Don't well, say anymore. Right forever. now is the time that matters. No, no, right now, like this week or next week or month or next month. It's not forever. Let's hope so. Let's, let's hope bring so. Our fingers yeah, crossed. Please, please, let's hope Somebody's so. Somebody's listening out there, please <laughs> open it up. Um, and then Vimeo. Vimeo is purely a non-commercial platform. So if you have a commercial film, chances are that those are not the platforms that you put it on. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. When you say commercial film, you mean like a feature film? Well, a film in which you make revenue from. Right. So when you say a, a, a video work which is going to make you revenue, you'd be surprised the number of, the amount of money people are making from just internet video. Okay. So, in fact, in Pakistan, I would say your cinema makes much less money than probably a video which is so low cost and zero cost of dissemination can earn great revenue. Much I put into it. So if I personally work, I would want to work for the bigger screen. Mm -hmm. That's that's where I enjoy watching films. Not not on my laptop screen, not on my TV screen. Not on your phone film, screen. No. Film is meant for the cinema. But I think uh, the first clarity that we need to make is, like, what's the difference between film and video then? Like, essentially, if you look at a film, the what we've been trained to do is basically work with emulsion. The things that you see coming out of a camera, that's physical thing is film. Mm -hmm. So we've been trained to actually work on that medium. And well, there is some debate about digital, but the truth of the matter is it is still the ultimate medium. It is the highest medium ever considered. So, you know, in order to actually uh, work on film, you need discipline. Otherwise, video basically means that you just keep on shooting, shooting. Okay, maybe I get some good footage, cut that up, post it on the internet. Maybe I get 100 million views if the content is that great. But being a filmmaker basically means that you are disciplined enough to actually work with people on a cohesive idea that you're able to transmit amongst all your individuals who are working with you. So that is the basic difference. So no, I would not consider ourselves to be pure videographers because we ultimately work on a storyline, on a concept of an idea that we want to create through you know cohesive collaboration. And film is the best medium to teach you that. Any comment on that? Yeah, I agree with what Adi is saying about, and uh, Taiba about the scale that she referred to. Uh, there's a certain uh, level of discipline that you get while making a film. And uh, uh, with, you can't get that without having that, uh, the process, that uh, the team that, that's involved with the project. Uh, 
then again i personally me, for me uh, the film is just basically the story that you're telling uh in uh, in content that's on the on the internet and uh, people that upload videos on the internet they're just based on a thought process that's been uh, that they may have overnight and they execute that with uh, a certain piece of equipment and they post it online so there's not enough uh, of a thought process that you that's involved in the whole thing and that impact is lot less uh, uh, in my opinion uh, as compared to film do you agree with that absolutely agree i mean filmmaking is a is a very long process it starts off with the inception of an idea yeah. which mm-hmm. then you put together into a plan and then you put together a team and then you get a casting done and then you go into production and you do it again if you have to and then you go and do the editing and then you bring in the sound guys to do the sound designing and then you do mm-hmm. a rough cut you show the rough cut and you start to cut it all again and you do it all over again so it's a process that can take depending on the duration of the film it can take months years years even so it's 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 an entire process and filmmaking is a journey I mean, is we way behind our competitors if if you look at recently we've got india which is an international player mm-hmm. you've got iran which in my opinion it makes one of the most fantastic movies i've seen and then you've got china that's coming up with its own industry as well i mean this mm-hmm. recent production was a uh, uh, Ch- flowers of war by uh, mm-hmm. uh, shang yi new what a fantastic film so we right then between all these big uh, regional players we need to synergize from them and we need to pick up from their processes and really um but in the absence of a film film as you say per se industry really re-evolving in pakistan you would not have a plan that's my concern that if that is not happening you have nothing to do really but uh, I I disagree on that. Okay. Now here in comes the internet. Like I said, what you were referring to previously. Basically what the internet enables us is to go beyond our current uh limitations right. as filmmakers. Since we don't have a distribution channel to, you know, showcase our work, what the internet allows us is to actually have access to markets that were previously not available to us. So if you have a great film, a great idea, a great script even, you can pitch it online. And there are people, there are companies, there are uh, festivals. I fully understand that aspect of it. But I'm trying to take you into a different direction. Yeah. Uh, Aga Basab, any chance that you can hear us right now? Now, now I can't hear him. If you could get him on the speaker, please. can hear you Pardon yeah me. fantastic or audio great we 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 have lost touched down aga you've heard our conversation I just lost do you again. what would you add to I this i can hear you if somebody could just i i wish i could hear you i'm so sorry i can i i can hear you i i i can hear you now i'm sorry i lost you completely okay what would you you've heard again. the conversation what would you no add sound. oh god he's gone again okay we'll take a short break yes No. We'll try to, let's take a short no. break and try to resolve this mm-hmm. much time. So I try to watch even shorter content, five minutes, six minutes, something that gives me something to do, and I watch a lot of that. So what I'm saying is that Pakistan is not producing enough of that short content with a deep impact. We've had two songs, um, One Pound Fish. and the other one apparently i haven't seen it i to i i tried to Every, but everyone is laughing at that i'm yet to see it I, so i don't know what it is uh, 30 seconds that's all i lost it i could not what well, he's he's done a, he's done such a horrible job that nobody's talking about it's about. fantastic really you know i respect the guy personally but see uh, well I, he's got the he's got the viewership can i just well, yeah i mean look it's 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 possible to put things out on the internet you can put it maybe even once a week you can put some things out yeah. on the internet but there's something to be said about high production value and low production value what the only thing that has to be said is high viewership value low viewership value <laughs> that is the only thing that matters because it is great to have created satisfaction but what's also more important is who's appreciating it i've been a, an amateur photographer in my time if no one's watching i could keep taking millions and millions of photographs nobody nobody sees them so there's no sense anyway the six shot <laughs>
thank you for staying with us, watching Perspectives. We've got to discussing about Twitter Vine along uh, the break. My perspective, pardon the pun, is that creating content which has high impact and gets massive viewership, that will get monetized. So yes, I understand your love and lust for grand work, but sitting in Pakistan, that is a bit of a challenge. So if you don't embrace the smaller world, the bigger world will probably never notice you. Um, let's try. Aga, can you hear me? And if you can, uh, please answer my questions. What are your challenges and opportunities? How are you enjoying your work? What all are you doing? Uh, I got into this field because my father was a filmmaker. Um, I came from, come from a long line of artists, so I chose filmmaking um, as a career. The, the greatest um, challenge that I feel today is when you talk to a client and you try to convince him over a project, you first need to educate the client as to what the production quality means. They do not understand what production quality is. And unless you do, you, you really cannot justify the cost. Because most of the people we talk to today come from uh, advertising background, if, if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. If not, people taking in charge of commissioning such projects are MBAs. No offense to Mohsin. I, I did catch that where he's, he's, uh, he's an MBA. Uh, but, but honestly, because people do not understand technicalities involved in filmmaking, they cannot really justify the cost when you tell them that, listen, this format is going to produce better quality because this is film or this video uh, video format is better than the other one. Mm -hmm. You first need to need to kind of uh, educate them over the format. And that I feel is, is the biggest challenge. We need to put the right people commissioning such products. Um, I've also been with many universities and um, we, we once got this entire curriculum for filmmaking and and editing was missing from it. I mean, how can you design a curriculum without editing as part of filmmaking? So I feel we need to put in the right people in the right place to take such such important decisions. Okay, Bas, when you say you need to put in the right people in the right place, the thing is, who would do it? I think, would you agree that the, that if the demand creates supply? And if there is enough demand for larger work, uh, supply would come in. Of course, the economics are a problem uh, of doing large work, and our film industry has taken a massive hit because of just the economics and good competition while we were producing bad stuff. How do you feel, short of government pumping in a billion rupees, how do you feel there will be a revival of what you're doing, or maybe you need to switch gears and just do what the market is demanding today? Uh, good question, Faisal. The thing is, I really feel that we need to put in our best. We need to put the right people in the right place, and I, I keep insisting on this over and over again. I just cannot insist enough of this. The reason we, the whether you put in the money or not, you need to have the expertise there. What we are lacking is expertise. There are not a lot, uh, there are not enough technically trained, sound people coming into this industry. It is probably because most of them really run after, um, uh, Television, because television seems to be where the money is today. Everyone feels that, okay, they'll end up with a job. And as far as films are concerned, there is no market. Uh, I know a lot of filmmakers and huge studios here. My cousins own huge studios. And it's really sad to see that most of them have, are turning their studios into go-downs. Uh, it was only the other day that they were like, yeah, this, we should just shut down our, 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 our studios. They constructed the best of it market. They have the equipment, they have the expertise. We just lack technically trained people, and people, again, should understand where to put in the money. If you understand the economics of film, you would know exactly where to go. Here, we need to educate our people how to sell their projects. You can do it online. Uh, it's a global market today. We're not just limited to Pakistan. But the perception is Pakistan is no man's land. We cannot give them work. People watching across the world this particular show, uh, they feel that Pakistan is like, you know, Mr. Qureshi sits here every night and just sells hogwash and he's just, you know, making a fool that Pakistan is, is a no-no land, is, is, is the tribal wilderness. Uh, but that's what the news says. Then my question, if you want international audience, if you want international right. business, what are you doing to change that perception through your videography? I know you don't like the word, 
But through your videography, what are you doing to change? Again, let me just add one more thing. Whatever short video even comes out of Pakistan is really even worse for your perception because you're really humiliating your own politicians, your own army, your own institutions. You're running down your own country. I am yet to see, maybe short of a couple, stuff, short stuff, which is actually showing the fantastic side of Pakistan. None of that happens. It's criticism. It's, it's, you know what I'm saying. Please. Yeah, I do. Uh, I understand what you're trying to say, that the perception is out there, and that's the worst thing that you can do about a country and talk about the negative things. Uh, all around you see people being frustrated by the daily, uh, you know, scenarios of our city. And the only way you can change that is if you have a clean and good perspective of yourself about the city, of the country. Um, that's what I feel uh, as filmmakers, as videographers, as whatever digital content you create. That's your duty to uh, create that good image for Pakistan. And if you don't have that, uh, the, the, go the good story, the good side uh, out there, then people are going to judge, you, uh, judge uh, the country according to what you have currently. And which is, frankly speaking, not, uh, not even close to what the standard is for the international market. So... Uh, we set up this, uh, personally I have along with uh, my, uh, you know, my team here uh, to set off, to start off this new wave of uh, short films at least, that, as the budgets, the budgets allow, to create that uh, good perspective amongst uh, at least our fellow Pakistanis and then go towards an international stage. We ourselves need to first understand that there's much more to uh, our, our country than the, these Remember that really that good video that came out about a year ago? Uh, uh, where it was, you know, I, I, I wish for a Pakistan where America right, 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 to get right. a visa. Yes. And that, exactly. I, it got very popular because it's it did. feel good, but the content was yeah. my really pathetic. Right. It's like, what fantasy? I live, won't live in a Pakistan where stars are. Right. Really about. What? It's not That's what happen. I talked about. But there was not yeah. anybody who would see it who's not a Pakistani hmm. and is not getting a feel good ho ho. Is going to say, what? What was that? Right. right? So my point is, why aren't you guys producing? Things which tell the world what Pakistan really looks like, not what everything out there. I know you want to do, but you can also do. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. All right. <laughs> well, it's not like we're not doing that. We're working. We're working on making some short films that we can also show internationally because there's so many film festivals that happen, which give us the opportunity to put out our work there and mm -hmm. show it internationally. So it's not like we're not trying. But then again. Um, it's not that easy. Like Sayeva said, it's not easy. Uh, our Trop Fest Australia, that was mm -hmm. where we showcased our film. It was shortlisted, but it did not make the final cut. Simply saying that we do not have the technical expertise at that level where, you know, where we can, uh, where we can immediately create content at that level very quickly. So, again, the talent is there. What but technical we, expertise do you need? Well, uh, in the sense, the biggest challenge that we had uh, when we were doing our film, we shot the film. Mm -hmm. Now, my film was even selected. Mm -hmm. Now, they told me they wanted it in a particular format, which wasn't just available in the market. I had no idea where to go. I was running here and there. That's what they, the, that's what they said. We need it in Digi Vita, although mm -hmm. my film was shot in HD. Now, they want, uh, in order for me to convert it, I was looking everywhere. But you, you understand the dilemma. The dilemma is that it's not advertised. Where should I go to get yeah. certain things done? So, so what Ali is highlighting is a very important point. Uh, filmmakers are doing their role. They started to, to, to make films, but we need ancillary industries around the big industry of filmmaking as well. Mm -hmm. So we need avenues where we can get that format. We need strong sound people who, who know the sound design, who can help us at will. We need strong editors who will actually work for us uh, out of their normal TV uh, uh, work. So, 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 in, we need so in, the, in the absence of that wish list, you young, fantastic, creative people are at a loss to give me three-minute videos, ten of them, which the world, I can showcase to the world and say, check this out, baby. Well, we have we, we, we have we have created videos. We yeah, do, yeah. but most of them are student. Uh, so work. Well, we do have them if you want. So them. why aren't we promoting, pushing, and showing the world this is what we look like? 
So when they see what we look like, mm. then they will bring in work as well. well. Uh, I mean, if you want to talk about that in terms of that, I really think if you look at the music videos that are being created post two thousand eight. Almost yeah. all of them have been created in DSLR videos, which is like very cheap to make. Yeah. Like on all point and shoot cameras. You guys, you guys stuck on technology. I'm stuck on the content in fact. Well, content, content is content. great. We That's have, what I'm talking about. We like, have one person over here, a very young, little mm -hmm. young filmmaker, who has come up with something new. He's making video, which is basically musical videos. Right. He makes music, and then he shows them visually. Fantastic. Now, now that's something that's doing very well internationally. Well, he sent it abroad and he sent it to festivals, and it's doing great. So we do have people who are coming up with such ideas. But, but we need more of these. Abbas, what do you think? Do you think there's enough enough videography happening to change the world's perspective towards parks? And I understand we all have a we all want to do great work. We all want to do fantastic films. I would love to see. Great sci-fi being made possible, but until that is happening, do you think there's enough video work happening which is projecting Pakistan in the true light of Pakistan? I would not say positive because there is no negative. The true light of Pakistan is that being showcased to the world, Abbas. This is uh, this is another great question. I this is this is this is what really hurts. Um, I see all the films, and unfortunately. Uh, it's become a norm now. You show something negative. I'm not. I'm going to say negative, even if you don't. If you make something, produce something negative on Pakistan towards um, whatever we believe in, it's going to be picked up by fits festivals internationally. It's what's going to make it, you know, make big. It's going to be projected on on a, on, a, on a larger screen, um, as opposed to something that says something positive about our region. Forget that. Uh, that's another debate. Now, coming back to videography and cinematography, I think. The worst thing that's happened to us is the digital age. Now, ever since we've entered the digital age, photography and cinematography has become up the operations of the camera, and you turn into a photographer, into a cinematographer. I know this because I've been teaching for eight, nine years, mm -hmm. and all my students, all my students, everyone who's done five classes, six classes, he he makes a logo and he's got his own label going. Is he the filmmaker or photography or something else? But they are filmmakers and photographers. And that is not the expertise we are looking at. You project something on online for long enough, it, it gains some recognition, a lot of brands pick him up, and there you go. You know, this guy is doing well. That's great. But when it comes down to uh, cinematography, that's not what it's all about. Cinematography is something that takes time. You need to understand light. You need to understand how to read shadows and contrast sure. and latitude of film. Uh, the band that it, it reads contrast. So, so it's a totally different thing. Unless you understand videography properly, you cannot produce because when you're surfing through, when you're surfing through a channel, uh, take, take television for instance, you're surfing through a channel, the first thing that stops you is the way a frame looks. Sure. If a frame does not look right, you're not going to stop, and then comes the content. So you need to make every frame look beautiful. Every frame should tell a story. Unless you can manage to do that, I don't see us anywhere in the international cinema world. Okay. Uh, how can we build on this? What are the, what's the possibilities, given the dynamics that we live in? We can't change the dynamics tonight. So what ends for the future? Uh, Primarily, I think it's uh, what uh, Sir said, it's the lack of education towards the field. Uh, mm -hmm. In today's day and age, uh, you can like get access to any information through your own uh, hand, uh, smartphones in your pocket. So, it's all about the time you put in, uh, the amount of expertise you gain through your experiences, instead mm -hmm. of like uh, being projected on, uh, to, uh, on a vast audience, like uh, on Facebook or wherever, you should first uh, give it some respect and take some time to understand the craft and not just jump into it. So that uh, you're not judged uh, you're, uh, as uh, an individual and as a country on based on what you uh, feel like doing instead of you what you deserve to do. So I believe it's the lack of education and lack of proper training that uh, we require. Uh, that's what I believe is a fundamental thing that is lacking. I do cinematography and personally cinematography is like being a visual psychiatrist. It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing experience and to study that, to learn that, to experience that is not just picking up the camera and pressing the record button. It's not as simple as that. And people need to 
understand this, people need to respect this. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to show something on the screen, which you, uh, if you can just bring in the, this camera into my screen, please, camera here. What's your opinion? Given the dynamics, what can we do? I think we just have to keep focus. It's a journey, as mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier. There are no shortcuts. We are looking for shortcuts. We have to put in our time. We have to learn the craft, learn it really well, so that we can compete with the Okay, the I want you guys to watch this, and then I'll, I'll okay. check this out. Hmm? It's going to be coming to this. It's about Holi. Video work is fantastic. Colors are fantastic. I know that India, wherever this is shot, is probably the most miserable jal, as they say, Kachiyabadi, where this is done. Yeah. But look at the way they sell and project. This is a high-end video. You can tell That's that. fine. That's I'm great. And this has got what you amazing seeing, production value. What you're, saying is, what you're seeing is high-end technical. What I'm seeing is impressive visuals. That is true. We, do, we don't want to get there. So, no, so this you don't have to get to. This you can do tonight. Is my question. <laughs> but at least you know that. No, not right now. Well, it's at night time actually, so we can't shoot that. Thing. <laughs> but, uh, come on. But truth be told, uh, no. Look at the wisdom. So it's phenomenal. It is. Slow motion works. Just, now just you owning a listen camera. To your words. Listen to the way it's done. The no. way it's, it's done. It's not that no, 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 easy. No, 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 no. It's it. fine. It's great work. But I think you guys are way more than capable of doing this, right. if not better. I, I agree with you, sir. So I think I, we, we have the necessary skills. I look at this and I know the technique that they've used. As so long as you know the technique, you can emulate this. You can do it. And it all comes down to getting a great idea. So action. where are my emulations? I want to see work 50, oh my God, work 50 times better than this for Pakistan. We, we're, we're getting, getting there. So we're, we're, we are getting, we're getting there. We're working hard. It's a process. It's and a we, process. We, we see, like, see, like I was saying, the tools are coming into the hands of individuals. Right, not everyone has the access to go to film schools. But I'm talking to you guys. Yeah, Abbas, when am I going to see something phenomenally beautiful visually coming out of Lahore, made by you, shown by me first on this show? That sounds great. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a lot of my work online. You can actually look look it up. Uh, there are, there, there, there are a few films of mine on YouTube. Um, one of them made it to Kara and then to Uppsala, the Portuguese film festival and the Swedish film festival, uh, Quarta. So that's online. You, you can, you can, you can watch okay. it anytime. Abbas, what you're going to do is... I think we are heading in the right direction. All we need is to ensure that we produce technically sound, sound people. Okay. Abbas, what you're going to do is you're going to email me link and you're going to send me the permission to yes. pick up stuff from there and show it on the show, even if you're not there. I am, I really, really want content which shows the true side of a very beautiful Pakistan so it can be showcased to the world. And I'm looking towards young photographers, videographers, filmmakers, cinematographers, whatever you wish to call yourself. I want visuals, sounds, music, art, the world has to stop seeing just the bomb. I'd like to talk about one of the difficulties Please. that we face is finance. There's, there's no Well, let's do there. small work which we can do without finance. Let's do short Even work. small work involves quite a lot of money. <laughs> Whether you like to admit it or not, the visuals that you were showing us, they cost money. They could do. Agreed. They do. But let's start with something small. We'll get you something big. Okay. We'll talk about, then we can talk about, like, you know, cell phone videos. Yeah, let's do that. But what's wrong with that? There's nothing let's wrong. Let's do that. It's fantastic. There's fantastic. There's you have fantastic to see and you just have, need to have the ability and technical skills to put it off. That's, that's all. But in terms of if you're talking about beautiful, beautiful <laughs> events. I'll, I want you to go to Twitter Vine and Instagram <laughs> video and <laughs> see <laughs> the kind of beautiful work. There's beautiful work to from, from, come from Pakistan as well. You should, like, you know. I, I, I know. Um, I know. I, uh, there is. Oh, okay, there is, there point, is. Point, 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 point me towards it and I promise to show it. Uh, Deal. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much, all of you. We're out of time. Good luck. Thank and you. you owe me videos, which are beautiful. <laughs> Aga Basar, thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, with beautiful pictures, beautiful visuals, and beautiful music. Good night.